You know who you are, right? Do you know which things you did well? Maybe. Did you have all the information you needed? I tried. Were you able to get your comments in when they needed to be in? No. Sure. Are you ever going to always be able to get your comments in when you think Just they need to be put in? Jamie. No. No. Listen, now, without being extremely Just rude and, listen. and yeah. listen possibly again. disjoining our conversation, the conversation flow. Yeah. Yeah. Did it stop and then this is totally not about that? And then something else is totally not? Or was it all related? Pretty much. I feel like it, was all related. it was. You guys did a great job at that. There were very few non sequiturs. Oh, that sounds like a vocab word. I feel like that's when, what they should have I'm guessing it means like people that... No, I'm trying to. No. Nope. It means like unrelated information. Yes. A comment that really doesn't fit the conversation. Like we just randomly showing up because it's in Yes. Oh, it's like... So. Yes. Get it back. You suck. You suck. Yeah. It's just to notice that there's a, an update available. Nice. You guys did such a great job of having one conversation all day last time. Thank you. Thank you. Really? You're so failing at that right now. I'm sorry. We put all our effort into last year. No, You just shot all of your energy and you're done for a month. Yeah. Okay. That's the problem here. Might want to get over that. You're going to have a boss that's going to want you to get over that someday. Up there on the screen. You can see some screen captures that our colleagues in Ohio grabbed for us. Did they like screenshots? Yes. They did screenshots of their computer while they were on. And what they did was, I don't know if you noticed or not, see the box? Which box? The little white box. What is that? Comments. That's a chat window. You yeah. About it. They were yeah. chatting about you in the background, and they were having their own little conversation while they're listening to your conversation. That's creepy. Did you notice that I was over here mostly? Yeah. But then I would come over here, I and then I'd come back about. here, and then the next time there was an opportunity, a question came out of me. Yeah. I saw them. It didn't come from me. It came from them. And the kids that were close enough could see them popping up. Yeah, I saw like little white boxes come like, up all the time. Yeah, when someone had to leave, they, like, I, I, heard, I saw them like, saying goodbye. Right. And at 12.40 p.m., Jim Bruner said, I broke them. That's a good question, Derek. Monsanto in all caps. Yes, in all caps. Glycophosphate. Let's now let's start. Let's start with 12:40 p.m. Hey, well, can I say something before we continue this sure. discussion? If you're not actively listening, and after everything that's said, you just simply randomly say "what" without thinking first, you're going to annoy me. <laughs> Already there. <laughs> <laughs> you're just figuring try, this out now, Paige. Try to understand. Try to understand some of the stuff that's being said. Right, but we're jumping into the middle of a conversation that we weren't a part of. But we can see the last three words of the comment above it. Improvement or unnatural? Does that make any sense to you? Makes sense to me. I know exactly what they're talking about. I'll bet half the room does if they stop and think about it, probably including you. Exactly. Very good. Does it depend, does your opinion on whether GMOs are good or bad, 
depend on whether that is an improvement to put more corn on an ear of corn or whether it's completely unnatural, your corn has a bioluminescence like some of those fish down in the bottom of the ocean in the dark. That'd be awesome. I could eat corn while I uh, uh, like sleep. You could have bioluminescent corn and you could find it in the dark. Let, let, me, let me throw that question out and I'm going to throw it to Paige. Yeah, I know. Do you care if there's more corn on your kernel? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How much is the Paige. kernel? Oh, sorry, Paige. How come? No, no okay. that, that's not going to cut it. Think about it. Yeah, I'll come back to you. Daniel. Yeah. Do you care if there's more corn on your kernel? Heck yeah. Why? Because more corn. More corn on your ear. <laughs> more corn needs more money. Oh my gosh. We already have corn on okay. our ear. Hey. Ear. That's a fair statement. How do you buy corn? Matter, right? I don't buy it. Personally. Someday you're going to grow up and you're going to have to buy your own corn. How do you buy corn? Go to the black market. Um, the black the market. The the, uh, so if you buy it on the cob, do you care if there's more kernels there? I guess you would. Well, you should. Because then you get more bang for the buck. Mm -hmm. Whereas with like a can. What, like what does a dozen ears of corn cost? Depends. Out of the back of a pickup in the parking lot. Oh. They're like three bucks. Is it three bucks a dozen? Probably. It depends. Four on bucks a dozen? It's not very much. No. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot. Three but is a lot of money. I'm if you could double the number of kernels on an ear of corn, could you charge more? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So does that fit with improvement? Or unnatural? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then Derek responds. My other question would be for them to discuss whether short-term gains are favored in debates about topics where they will be likely to be one cause and effect after another. Read that. And somebody, I want somebody to be able to repeat to back to me in your terms what he's asking or what he's stating. Which question is this? You're on Derek. The middle one. To all, my other question would be, and I'm going to want somebody to give that to me in, in teenage speak, mm -hmm. with maybe an example. Give it a shot. Go ahead, Parker. Taylor, listen closely. Make sure he's doing it right. Okay. Uh, yo, dog. We should communicate whether, like, the here and now game or pluses are tubular, tubular in arguments about this dealio. Okay, a little less teenage. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, go ahead. Yeah. He's asking, or he's saying that um, if small games are more favored in debates over the short term, meaning that a month from now or so, that goes on for maybe a year, whereas long term would be two decades. And in the long term, what's going to happen? Um, another effect of the DMO? Mm, not quite. Not quite. Who wants to help? <laughs> My turn? Yeah, go ahead. How about, should we be more worried about Daniel getting more bushels of corn out of his field this week? Or should we be worrying about the long-term health of the people who eat corn? Me. 
Is that the same question that he just asked? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I like money. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's the back end of that question that I think intrigues me the most, that there will likely be one cause and effect after another. When you guys were having your discussion the other day, did not you think about your special interest groups, right? The immunologists have a particular reason for thinking this. This is going to cause this. Um, the environmentalist says this is going to cause this. And the farmers say this is going to cause this. Where do you stop? What's the limit? How many different causes and effects can you go to in order to say... You know, think about think about you wanting to go out on a Saturday night, and Mom says, no, we have to go to Grandma's the next morning really early. Yeah, but I'll come home early. Yeah, but what happens if you don't? Yeah. Well, you know, I'll plan for it. What happens if your plan goes awry? One cause and effect after another can continue, and, and as, as things arise, you get new things. As, as a new problem erupts, then we have a new cause and new effect. The long term is going to give us all of those problems causes and effects, or right things as far as that goes. Somebody said something about Roundup Ready corn is already causing problems in that some of the weeds are now resistant, resistant to Roundup. So the more you use chemicals, the more problems they cause, so we have a cause and effect. We've been using Roundup more and more and more, and now we have some weeds that are immune to Roundup. So what's the next cause and effect? Those things are immune to Roundup, so now we're going to have to find a different chemical to put on our field to kill those weeds. Kosha, right? Yeah, and we're using more of that one because it's coming, they're starting to become more of that. Okay, and then what happens if you use Roundup and this other one that we come up with that's going to kill Kosha, and what happens if the two of them get mixed together because the rain, you know, moves stuff. And now we have this new chemical, it's these two chemicals mixed together. And, and what happens if that gets in the water and gets into the fish and you eat the fish? Well, uh, so that's what Derek was talking about. Then we become Roundup resistant. Well, yeah. Or, or somebody was talking about mixing chemicals and dying. So as... As you, as who you are now, teenagers typically think in the here and now. When you're doing a debate like this, what should the debate be centered on? The here and now or the further into the future? The future. Oh. How do you do both, Daniel? You got to go between the two. Like. Because I thought somebody in your discussion said something about the fact that the um, long-term effects aren't really available. Yeah, I forget. You, you need to start thinking about it. Did you say that, Because you need to... Like, with them out of view. They never thought about it. She doesn't now, remember. Now they're causing problems. But now they're starting to think about it. So now they're, they've created different mixes of chemicals that you're, and when you go there, you can ask for it, but they'll, uh, some, a lot of uh, places uh, ask what you've done already, and you should, and they recommend other products for it. When you guys put your float together last Friday, did you have it all planned out ahead of time? No. No. Heck no. Would your build have been faster? Yes. Do another thing that caused another problem? Yeah. 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 Another thing that caused another problem? Yeah. Yeah. I grew up half the time. Ours only fell apart before we got it to here. Well, ours fell apart. Did you, when you started building your float, did you think to the long-term effects, or did you think to the short-term, and we got to get this part done right this very second? Yeah. We were sure of both. We, just we, thought we wanted to get, to get it done then, and but we made sure we were thinking about what would... Work. How we would have to do it. Yeah. Yet it fell apart. Well, yeah, that's because we had bad days. <laughs> so, well, 15 miles an hour. In the long hey, term. Hey, that's slow to pick up goes. In the long term, then, your short term. Was a fail. Was a fail. Well, okay. I don't so. Know, I wasn't there. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, we had to tape it since we got to school. At the bottom of this, Jim says the house always wins. Is that a truism? You know what he means by the word truism? Not even close. Is it true? Is that something that you could bring and get paid for? <laughs> I have been no. now. Yeah. Yeah. I was I happy. Have, I, have, um, I have 28. I have 56. I have nothing. Sweet. I have like 22. I have 56 being <laughs> In what, two weeks? Maybe not even? I tried making the robot. No, I've had it since we, uh, the 
You did it early? A statement that is obviously true. It's like uh, nothing new or interesting. <laughs> is that obviously true that the house always wins? Is that a well, duh? <coughs> Do you know what that means, that the house always wins? Is that like a casino thing? Yes. It came from gambling. Does the casino make money, or do the people that go in the casino, the casino make money? A lot more money than the people. Duh, right? Because Casinos wouldn't exist if they lost money. <laughs> Hello, so it's a business. It's like that episode of the Twilight Zone, man. Okay, so the house always wins, and in this case, the house is Mother Nature. Somebody is it true that way? way? Explain that to me. How does Mother Nature always win? Okay. So we try. We try. We invent Roundup. It kills all weeds. You spray it. Ta-da. Everything dies. Except 20 years later, not everything dies. What do we call that in nature? Evolution. Adaption. I'm only going to say that if you spell it or sound it right. Adaption. I said it right, it counts. There you go. Now, wait a second. I want to take the conversation off of this for one second and come back. You have to come back. What about vaccinations and drugs and antibiotics? Same problem. Yeah, because certain antibiotics don't work anymore due to the fact that the biotics, the, the bad biotics or good biotics that they want to kill, have adapted. In, in order to survive. There's several different infections in hospitals that have adapted to not really be bothered by the stuff that used to kill them. Darn. MRSA. Drug resistant bacteria? Probably. You've heard of that? Yeah. That's a real thing. And nobody cares until it's in you. And then you care a whole lot. Because you're going to, like, die in a month or so. And it's going to be miserable and painful. And you're not going to like it. If you had a drug-resistant bacteria, you would probably be in a hospital bed and not getting out and using a bedpan and feeling like you'd be better if you were dead. So, better living through chemistry? Question mark? Or not? I don't understand the question. Better living through chemistry is about drugs, and it can make your life better. Okay, then, yeah, sure. You get up in the morning, and you take your vitamins, and you pop pills all day long, and you take shots, and every time you get the sniffles, you go to the doctor, and what happens? They say you're fine and go home. You spend a lot of time at the doctor. You spend a lot of time sick. You grow up playing in the dirt, and putting toy tractors in your mouth when they've been in the dirt and Around animals. you end up being 74 years old going to the doctor for the third time. Oh. Or you say I'm not going to the doctor he can eat the sleepy bee. That's There's that. Hi Mrs. Keller. Just make sure that you don't it smoke a cigarette. Yeah, it does. Oh not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> The we all have lies. stuff to do. The camera never lies. Are you, are you what was that? You get a picture. It's in the background. Haley Dufek, would you catch Mrs. Kellard up in what we've talked about so far? Um, well, we were talking about... Haley, do you know if she can hear you first? No. Can you hear me? I can hear you a little bit, yes. Okay. Well, we talked about some of the comments that people made on Friday when we were having, or whatever day we had our debate, and, um, Just think of a few topics that we've talked about. Oh, we talked about, um, like, how, uh, I don't know what that one said. Mr. Bruner? Yeah. Okay. Bottom line. What he said about the house always being the mother nature, and then, or yeah, the house always wins, and then the house is mother nature. 
And what do we think about that? Think about Mother Nature. Correct. Always winning. How does Mother Nature always win? What was the word that Taylor used? <laughs> <laughs> Big one. David couldn't say it. <laughs> Adaptation. And then Mr. Schneider took us off on another another band, which where did we go from there? Uh, resistant bacteria. Okay. Drug resistant bacteria. Ms. Keller, we're trying a new Bluetooth speaker and microphone system, so let us know if you can't hear. Okay, I can hear pretty well so far. Good. It, it helps if you have a $150 Bluetooth speaker and microphone and if you have a $12 speaker and microphone. Makes a big difference. So on a different computer... What's different in the view? They're on top and we're in the middle. And did we not say observation was going to be important in science class? I do believe it's the part where Trevor said, according to Steve Lau. It could be. That was probably that part when you stood up. And it's when Daniel was smoking a big old cig. Smoking them boobies. It was actually the book. So, about 12.45 p.m., this question was asked. Wait a minute, how can that possibly be true? Where were you at 12.45 p.m.? It's their time. time. Oh, and what time is that? Oh, it's the best time, 11.45. What's the actual name for the time that Ohio is on? Eastern. Eastern, Eastern. and we're in oh, I got that right. Central. Central, and are we currently on Standard Time, or what's that other one? Pacific. Are we Pacific? No, we're in Standard, but... Don't jump ahead too far. It's not, not until the first weekend in November. Oh, daylight 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 daylight. Are we on standard time or daylight savings time? Daylight savings. Daylight savings. We're on daylight standard right, standard right now. Standard. Are you sure? Daylight saving is when it goes in the month ahead of us. What, what happens in the fall? It jumps it back. Fall. It goes back. You fall back and in the spring, spring you yeah. spring ahead. So yeah, why fall is called the fall. One of these next... Sunday mornings, we're going to have to sleep in an hour. Do we get an extra hour of sleep or do we lose an hour of sleep? This is what these people don't understand. Oh, I thought I tried to explain it. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same. We just well, we get an hour of sleep. Oh, we don't get an hour of sleep. Right. Right. You digress. Yes. It's uh, about time. It's about figuring things out. <clears throat> Logic. Everything. Logic. All right, so Mary asked, can our world population be sustained without GMOs today and into the future? No. 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 Depends on who you ask. And I think I... Population. Yeah. What does that mean, Taylor? If you have a population, there'd be more food and you wouldn't have to have GMOs. But wouldn't but we have less food produced because there were fewer people to... Grow it? The, the farmers would all die. Taylor, I'm asking Taylor. Go ahead. If you were to kill the farmers and uh, the cattle people, ranchers, as your half population, and everybody would die. That's a problem. Do you think ISIS has thought of that? Yeah. Do you think Russia has thought of that? Yeah, but they couldn't kill me. I'm unkillable. Hmm. I like the second half of her question even better. And should it be sustained? What does that mean? Should the world be population sustained. be sustained? Keep going. Would it be better if we kill off half the world and it's not sustained? Or is it, should it be sustained? Should the world population continue to grow the way it does? No. It should okay. continue to be regular. Guys, yeah. how many people can talk at one time? One. One. That's the person I want to hear. I want everybody to contribute, but I can't have you talking over each other. Now they're all going to shut up. Yes. Yeah. Man, I'm going to talk with you. Go ahead. Go, Parker. <coughs> well, if we World look, population. Well, if we look at it like hunting, hunting, we have to sustain the environment. By, that's why they sell tags, and we can't just go out and kill all the animals. Exactly. And 
right now we don't sustain our own population, so we just let people have more babies. So as we get, some people can have triplets, etc. But yeah, China. Yeah, China. We, we sustain the animal population by making sure that there's a certain amount of animals so they don't eat too much food and their predators make sure they the predators eat and etc. Well, China does sustain their crap, don't they? Like they 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 only let you have one child, right? Yeah. There are exceptions to that now, but it used to be that way, yes. I'm also gonna throw a flag on the word sustain. In relationship to population control. There's a better one. There's a better word. Holy water shot that What does and sustain mean? Regularly. Don't stare at me no. and throw out things you think. I'm asking you a question. Give me I some proof. Give me some evidence. Sustain? Uphold. What does sustain mean? Scientifically. And not necessarily in a court of law, like Eric has said. Sustain. How do you spell it? With letters and stuff. It's up there, Taylor. <laughs> Close enough. What does that have to do with the China? The first hit, I'm sorry, can I, can I just say it? It was Hallmarks of Cancer 5. That was my first hit, and it was a blog. So is, is your evidence of, of having triplets or having too many babies or not having enough babies fit in this argument of sustenance? What? Sustaining? Me? Me? Anybody? Can you say the definition of Continuing over extended period of time. First question that gets my head is defined extended I have a different period definition. of time. Mm -hmm. I have a different definition though. What do you have? It says the quality of not being harmful to the environment or depleting natural resources and thereby supporting long term ecological balance. Can I ask you your site? Uh, Dictionary.com. <laughs> I'm hearing some bias in that one. Did anybody else hear well, bias in that one? Science, so. No, I know. I'm hearing bias in it because of the use of the unnatural resources and stuff. That was the environmental science definition yeah, that's what of saying. sustained? Mm -hmm. What's just the first definition? Oh, the first definition isn't a definition because it uses the root word. Oh. <laughs> So is dictionary.com really a great place to go look at? No, it isn't. Gracie, what's up? Yeah. I have one. I have an environmental sustainability definition. Or do I? Is this is, ah. Just tell us, Gracie. Okay. The ability to maintain rates of renewable resource harvest, pollution creation, and non-renewable resource depletion that can be continued indefinitely. I said I think sustain is not the right word to use in this circumstance. How come? Just because sustain is like what they're saying. It's the ongoing. I think regulate would be the better yeah. term because that's controlling. Okay. That's. I'm glad you brought that up because that happens. People think exactly what Daniel's thinking. To sustain... In this context, the context that it was used on the wall, and the English teacher may disagree with me, but I don't think so. You're wrong. <laughs> y chromosome. Yep, I forgot. You're always wrong. I'm the guy. I'm always wrong. Parker said environmental sustain means to keep something going forever. So South Dakota deer population. Mary said she heard on the radio that... Um, Turkey licenses are going to be cut down this year. Makes sense. Why? Because everybody shot them. Because the turkey population went up or down? Down. Turkey population goes down, hunting licenses go down. Down. Because we want to sustain the turkey population. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Pheasant population has been going down forever. Did they cut back on pheasant licenses? No. No. Why not? Because they just regulate by the day. Wait, wait, wait. Why do people come to South Dakota? 
Oh, oh, because because that's our, that's our oh they made a financial decision to say, screw the pheasants. Let them die. That's what you have. Kill them all. all. And then because, you stupid pheasants that just run all over the place. Because we need those tourism dollars. <laughs> so there's always going to be a decision made based upon what do I get? What's it going to cost me? Do you know the way they right? tell that if they were like, hang on. What do you do? Heather was just talking about is regulation. And regulation is the government saying you can do this and you can't do that. My way or the highway. You can do this if you have a license. This you don't have to have a license. For this you have to pay. For this you don't. That's regulation. Sustainability has to be regulated. True or false? Well, what does that mean, Taylor? Circumstantial. What does that mean? Well, if you were to be sustaining the deer population, <laughs> cut back on killing them. But if you were sustaining the human population, you would kill more deer. Ah. I get it because he's talking about like yeah. it's based on like presence. So which is more important? Deer. The deer or the people? Mm -hmm. We're both in my opinion, the deer. deer. We could, if we don't then deer stay in all the our food. No, no, no. We're all gonna die from starvation and they're just gonna all nothing's gonna be seen. I like Mr. Bruner's comment following. Enjoy your science and research around school. Hey, 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 hey. Actually, read it then. So people can understand it. The majority of scientists and research around food sustainability says no, but the impact on natural resources will be quite dire, specifically water. Says no to what? Well, the, pop that the population will be sustained. There you go. That's the question. Can our population be sustained? And Jim's answer was no. no. Well, according to unless the scientists and the research. Right. Unless we have GMOs. So we have to have GMOs. Or the scientists say there's going to be people dying. If we don't we have GMOs. That. And what is the effect of using GMOs according to Mr. Bruner's statement? Don't stare at me. Look at the words. That we all die. Quite dire. Water is yeah, like there you go. Cow. Are you telling me that, that water and GMOs are tied together? What? Last time Mr. Schneider said something about the corn in uh, California and they're running out of water. So if we got more kernels per ear, does that stalk of corn, that one plant, need more water? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it, it needs more water, is that going to affect the availability of water? Yes. Yeah. Regionally or globally? Oh. So California's having a drought and they have a water problem, but South Dakota doesn't. Yeah, yeah. South Dakota has a water problem too. Do we have a drought? Do we have a water problem? Do we have both? Probably both. It could be both. Yeah, you guys had a drought. I, a, I think a drought is different than a water problem because yeah. a water problem means that there's something but no. seriously wrong. No, I, I agree with you. Drought drought also because they just don't have the water. They don't have the water. They have their water problem is not poison. It's not yes. dirty. It's have water. not there. Yeah. They don't have enough water. Missing. You guys were talking about arguments the other day and not getting a word in edgewise because you think some people, when they state things, that they're out just absolutely right with what they say. But that whole statement right there, what can what argument can you develop for Mr. Bruner's statement? Where's the proof? No. What? Argument can you develop? What can you come back and rebut that with? Rebut. With, with How the much water um, is say it again. How much water is there? You could ask that question. I'm going to make a logical, probably misstatement that could be used effectively. GMOs cause water shortages. <gasps> well, the GMOs could take up more water to grow, thereby causing a water shortage. Yeah. Now I want to know whether or not that's true. Do the GMO plants and seeds and use of GMOs cause more water to be used? Oh, yeah. can use no, you cannot say, oh, yeah, and stare at me and just say things. Find the proof. What about GMOs? Do they use more water? 
No, find the proof. Oh. In science, you are not allowed to have an opinion unless you have facts to back it up. But that's not right. <laughs> that, 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 uh, what's it called? It's our freedom of speech. No. In science, you can't say the purple notebooks are awesome unless you have facts to back them up. <laughs> you can't. Because I can also see the other side of the argument coming out there as well. GMOs use less water, thus helping the drought. I developed a new tomato that takes half the water of a regular tomato. Right. We're going to grow them upside down. Do GMOs cause cancer? Ah, uh, million dollar question. Yeah, now you're talking about subjective versus objective. And if it uses less water, is the concentration of anything bad in the plant intensified because it doesn't have enough water? According to this website... What website, page? Responsibilitytechnology.org Tell me what kind of a, an organization runs it. Wait, was that technology? Those are very Wait, 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 wait. Is this a bunch of tree huggers? Or is this a bunch of people that hate tree huggers? Are they environmentalists? Are they farmers? Are they concerned citizens? Are they the FDA? Are they the government? Who and where is their... their the FDA their, rules. Their stuff law? Here, here's one that you guys don't usually think of. Is it four people that are funded by a petroleum company? That sit in an office and, and build websites <laughs> like this and put out information like this? Actually, this is non-profit, tax-exempt, charitable organization. Run by whom? I don't know. Don't figure that out. And then we're going to come back to you. The South Dakota Innovation Lab is a non-profit, tax-exempt education Armor High School organization. Is a non-profit, tax-exempt. Founded in... And why do we care about them? What's their? Their organization. Yeah. Well, Are they good? Are they bad? Went to that one. Uh, Again, you're going into the research, trying to figure out whether or not the research you're looking at is good research or well, fly-by-night research. Funded by Taylor, it says log and tap. No. <laughs> right. This is a dot. But if it's yeah, funded, but if it's funded by Monsanto, it's probably going to have a point of view before they start their research. If it's funded by tree huggers and some billionaire who wants to fund tree huggers, it's probably going to have a conclusion before they start the research. And you have to know. <laughs> you have to look to see whether it's objective information. Paige, what are you finding, kid? It says it was founded in 2003 by Jeffrey Smith, who is an international <coughs> best-selling author and GMO expert. Oh, interesting. What's he write books about? Yes. How am I supposed to know? You go find it out. Okay, I can do that. Alright, cool. And wait, how deep are we now? How many layers of questions did she ask just to Paige? Like three, four. So Paige is three layers deep in this research, trying to figure out if she can believe what's on the page in front of her. Yeah, and We also know that Mrs. Schneier hates Paige, so... Well, right, we established that at the beginning of the class. <laughs> Yeah, I think we Actually, she hates our friend, but she hates Paige a little bit more. Taylor, did you figure out your research? Good research? Bad research? I gave up. You gave up? <laughs> a lot of people will do that when they start researching, because it gets so deep in finding yes. stuff. It was Daniel. a science website. I found this website says gmoinside.org. Ask him a million questions. I will. He's on the same one that Taylor was on. Go to the top and read yep. the first That's the same one, Taylor. Four letters on that one, too. Yep. Get up and also, look, it's a good look website. Right it's underneath it, look right underneath it, getting GMOs and toxins out of our food. And then on the side, oh, there's a bunch of pens that say, There might be a point of view on that page, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, it might be some slanted stuff. And then there's yeah, also the, buttons the, that the say, this if the I don't want. They have a lot of corn, Then we I'm not supposed to storage. Okay, so what point are Mary and I trying to make with this? Everybody has an opinion. Erica is a terrible basketball player. Yep. Oh, she totally is. How many turnovers did you have last year? How many shots did you miss? Did you shoot 100% free throws? I had fouls? She's a terrible basketball player. Well, you're asking how long. Oh, wait. How many shots did you make? How many fouls did you make somebody else commit? How many, How many assists did you have? How many assists did you have? 
I have a question. How many times did somebody try to steal the ball from me and fail? That is way too many questions. Rebound. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, rebound. You can, good, good. you can set up your questions to only gather bad information about something, can't you? Because we all know Eric is a pretty good basketball player. No. Nah, hey, sucks. about fouling them, I can oh, say Fouls are just like mine. You don't want to waste stuff. I have a question. Yes, Bailey. I'm stay here. Um, I found a website called Institution of Science and Society. And? Well, that be like I, you cannot, I can tell you this. You cannot go by the title alone. When you are doing research and you try to identify whether or not the title alone is making it valid research or not, you will lose every time. It costs less than $200 to legally file and start your own business, and I can start a business that says only true facts. And that's the title of my business. Right. And we can make a web page. And it could be all. And I can put all kinds of stuff about Erica being a horrible basketball player. Correct. Erica, you just. And then everybody would believe it because my organization is only true facts. Oh, Have you ever seen the movie The Gamble of Our Lives? (laughs) No. This dude wrote it. Right. Well, of this oh, website. Well, guess what? I wrote Shawshank Redemption. Because I'm answering Mrs. Schneider's question. But you did. Yeah. Okay. I bet. I'm a little curious now about that because to me, the gamble of our lives, the title of that kind of leads me to believe that we are um, looking at... Bias? Yeah. So now I'm going to go look. According to... Is that a, uh, it's described as a life changer. Aren't they all? Is that an evocative Aren't title? They all? What does that word mean? Evocative. Air cool. It evokes. Ooh. It evokes means? That's different than provocative. Cool. Well, it kind <laughs> of means pro- kind of wants you to work, see what their point of view is. It evokes what you believe and it trusts what they believe. Oh, so to change. provoke is to push out and to evoke is to pull out? Alright, here you go, ready? The Gamble of Our Lives, the entire title is called Genetic Roulette, The Gamble of Our Lives. When the U.S. government ignored repeated warnings by its own scientists and allowed untested GMO crops into our environment and food supply, it was a gamble of unprecedented proportions. The health of all living things and all future generations were put at risk by an infant technology. After two decades, physicians and scientists have uncovered a grave trend. The same serious health problems found in lab animals, livestock, and pets eating GMO foods are now on the rise in the U.S. population. And when people and animals stop eating GMOs, their health improves. This seminal documentary provides compelling evidence to help explain the deteriorating health of Americans, especially children, and offers a recipe for protecting ourselves and our future. So now, Paige, you've done the research. What do you think the bias in that particular article is going to be? What do you think? I found his books. Yeah. So he's probably yeah. not for them, right? No. And is it, can you, does is that, that mean, because everything on this website, he was against GMOs. Right. Everything Here's the thing with that, though. You don't immediately discount it because it goes against what you believe. You just have to understand the bias before you go in. And, and another way to say what she just said is, it doesn't mean everything he says is wrong. Right. Mm-hmm. It, oh, it might be <laughs> colored, it might be shaded, it might be leaning one way, but that doesn't mean that all of his facts are incorrect. It, it might be that every single fact that he put down and every number that he put down is 100% true. It's just the way he looks at them. Like, Erica's a terrible basketball player. Yeah, shame, Erica. Gosh, Erica. It's really fun for now. You're us down. It's all about how you look at things, right? So don't let your opinion or someone else's opinion shade things for you. Let the facts determine whether you're for something or against something. Is it for them? And? Imagine what the world is. All right, so what else was said the other day? Uh, the GMOs are a good thing. Is there anything you about that? Yeah, the GMOs still buy it. It's never talked. I'm always going to be biased. Yeah, I'm, I'm always going to be my way. way. You can't change me. Yeah, yeah, this is high thoughts. Here's our next screen. Aw, oh, there's a really pretty picture of Mrs. Keller. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> And the top of my mom's head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my advisor. 
And here we go. Why do you know so many people? Wow. We're old. I talked to Matt and he said he was too busy for us going in on us. Yeah? Uh, he said he had to take out a plot. I told him good, you don't want to be there. <sighs> So when this gets done scrolling sideways, which is taking forever. <laughs> then I find out I have to go to a smaller. There we go. This will work, I think. My other question would be for them to discuss whether short-term gains are favored in the debates. We saw that already. The house always wins. Can our population be sustained? No one else always wins. Uh oh. You mean Zebra muscles. Isabel. What? Oh, Sorry. Zebra muscles. I don't know what they are. Oh, zebra muscles and invasive little demons? Invasive? All of those things that are going in. Well, because they Oh, they are. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, Everybody doesn't it. know what we're talking about. Oh. When I searched it, it said uh, zebra mussels in South Dakota. Are there zebra mussels in South Dakota? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Heard, yeah. You said invasive. What the heck do we mean invasive? What's an invasive species? They invade into places that don't have their natural predators. Can we do a little more scientific? You're not wrong. A species that does not belong, say you bring a mountain lion from Colorado. Oh. Say a species that only exists in a certain area and bring it to that area and it's a suitable condition where they can still live, but they are not supposed to be living there because they don't have the predators or other things that are help control their population. So like grizzly bears in Douglas County. Yeah, yes. What about pheasants? What do you mean by that question? Because that's where I went. Go ahead. Because pheasants, they were originally from China. Yeah, and they were they were brought here because and they survived because they don't really have much other things that like, eat them. Well, because their yeah. population, well, some people label it invasive as a population of animals that goes out of control, like zebra mussels. There's nothing here to control their population, so it once they get into the water and they reproduce so fast that we can't control them. About so the pheasants, since we hunt them constantly. Well, why don't we just release a bunch I know, of but you got a list so, of them. Can't so talk what's to the difference that? between an introduced species and an invasive species? Pheasants would be an example of introduced because we brought them here and they're on purpose. On purpose, but the ecosystem accepts it in properly with predators to take care of it and make sure they, that they don't go out of control. Can so anybody you're telling me there's no danger that... The state of South Dakota is going to be covered with pheasants, and you can't take a step without kicking them. Well, that would be kind of cool if it did happen, but that would be nice. Can anybody name pheasants. another invasive species in South Dakota? Oh, flying carp. Why? They're eating those. Because ah! uh, they nothing. They are they took over so the James fast, River, and they can, you can't get rid of them. Because they took over the James River too. I don't know if there is predators, but they invade. Not supposed to be here. They were used as bait, and then they all of a sudden reproduce like that. Yeah, an, in no, an introduced species can become a invasive species. So. Hunter, find Good me answer. another invasive species. Eurasian doves. Eurasian. So why did he say GMOs equal zebra mussels? Now you have to go into that, that reading portion here. How come those two words are put together with equal signs? What's the what's the implication that he's trying to make? GMO. Hang on a minute. Hold your thought. Let everybody think about it for just a second. Paige, you have a question in I front know. of you. Yeah, go find it. I have a solution. Hang on a minute. Good. You could make millions if you do. Sure, Mrs. Schneider, would you like to unplug the Bluetooth? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Are you getting feedback? Yeah, and um, oh, there we go. 
Now you're back. It just that needed a minute great. to switch over to the internal microphone. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's way clearer. So you were, she was hearing, I, I'm wondering what, okay, we got to figure that out. Yeah, there's were you just getting different like, options on that. Yeah, were you just getting like double voices? No, it was just really quiet and there's a lot of static and, okay. I, you know, sometimes I could hear a student and all of a sudden it would cut out and be static. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry to interrupt. No, 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 that's... That could be because it was Bluetooth and not wired. So now I'm going to wire it and we'll see if that works. And if it doesn't, you just say so and we'll pull the plug. We'll test this right away before we talk again. Hang on a minute. I'm trying to think of the um, what the plant is down by Springfield. No, it's not. In the in the water. Oh, it's in the water. Hmm. All right. Can we be Ty, go ahead and talk to Mrs. Keller. Hi. What about the what about a seam lamprey? Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I don't think she's hearing us. Is she? I'm good. I think so. Alex, please. Now that blue. I said the wrong name. I meant to say Ty. I don't know if that's <laughs> only charging or if it's working through there. Talk to Mrs. Keller again. Hi, Mrs. Keller. <laughs> I don't think so either. In through USB. Maybe she doesn't like you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, who would? Okay. <laughs> that should all be uh, transferred over now and you should be running on the, the external. It's super bassy. I can, I can hear okay, but it's like like a football game or something. It's... So you we don't need sound like Mr. Shane. You sound like Mr. Schneider. <laughs> <laughs> we hear her really good. You need to change your input. We can hear you really well. To, we need oh, to change wonderful. your input. But you can't yeah. hear us very well. <laughs> <laughs> you need to change your input then to yes, your computer. Your computer. I was trying to ask a question. We have a good bread. I can change this to the internal mic. Right. And now the mic is through the computer. And the sound is through there. Great. That sounds good. Awesome. Okay. All right. That's what we need to know. Hunter, you came up with another West invasive Nile. species. The West Nile virus. West Nile virus? Yes. Can a virus be an invasive species? I said it was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. That's going to be one of those science things that... It's a dark dove, so... Can a, can a virus be a species? Or I believe species. so. What does that say about West Nile? It's a bacteria. And a bacteria. It's if it's a species, is it alive? Yeah. I think we shouldn't kill it. Bacteria bacteria are alive. So we should kill them. Is Roundup alive? Yeah. No. no. That's a poison. No, Roundup is a chemical. It's a poison. <laughs> I think it's, it's alive. It kills, people. it kills animals, whatever. Biological things. Biological. Things. You can delete that if you want to. That's from a long so, time. in order for something to be an invasive species, it has to be a species. In order to be a species, it has to be alive. Where's your delete button? Does a species have to be an animal? Not necessarily. This definition. Could be a plant. So now we're getting into taxonomy, which is one of the next things that we're going to do. I think it can be plants, animals, or pathogens. There you go. There is a plant. Oh, what's a pathogen? Holy cow! Isabel just used a big word. It's not that big of a word. It's a... Uh, Cat? Ooh. Hank, you need to... I'm, I'm not going to go through your email with you right now. How sure that one? Yeah? A couple of you, though, the other day... Once or a couple hundred times. A couple of you guys the other day, though, when you were having your discussion, you used a V word. What was that V word? Birds. Vehicular. That's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. We're just guessing, guys. You're getting all of this. No, I can't hear Taylor. Vector. There you go. What is that? Um, it's a thing that carries a disease to a different thing. And you know that because? I played Infection. Played a game called Infection. Nice. 
Oh yeah, that game. It's a free downloadable game. Yeah. yeah. It, was it, was free. it was free, but now it's not free anymore. It's on my computer. It's got to be free. It is still free. Free There's All probably right. a paid free upgrade. There's a yeah. Steam version that's not free. Okay, like so game. GMOs equals zebra mussels. Why did Mr. Bruner go to that implication? Because Taylor they... had his hand up first, so we're going to let Taylor go, then we'll let Alex go, and then we'll let Mason go. What's my solution for zebra mussels? Let's nuke them. Go ahead, Taylor. Since zebra mussels is an invasive species, I, you don't need they it. just take up whatever spot they want. And then uh, GMOs, but also be somewhat, somewhat like an invasive species mm -hmm. because they're everywhere. You need to just go sit down really and listen for a little bit. Could be. All of them? Or some of them? Most. Or most of them? Most of them? All right. Well, saying that we have the GMO crops and how we were talking about cross-pollination, and the cross-pollination could lead to other species of plants being become GMOs. Well, the zebra mussels have to feed off of some. Say that what they feed off of cross-pollinates with the GMO plants, and that gets the GMO, gets those plants, zebra mussels, eat, to be genetically modified, in or, and those genetic modified organisms that the zebra mussels eat give the zebra mussels some nutrients or something, which allows them to reproduce faster, be more resistant to certain pesticides, etc. It makes the zebra mussel, through all that cross-pollination, all that, a stronger species. And that's a good thing or a bad thing? Bad thing when, well, good thing for the zebra mussel, bad thing for us. Yes, and remind me, I want to come back and comment on that. That's what I was going to say, pretty much, but not as scientific -y. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, dumb that down for me. What did he say? Uh, basically, you can have the plants that the zebra mussels eat, and then... If you have GMOs crossed with the plants, then the zebra mussels are going to adapt to that. And then they're going to continue to just take stuff over and, yeah. And then we'll be screwed after that. Because they took over the, like, the whole river or whatever. You have a lot of stuff right in there. There's a lot of good stuff in, in those three things. And I want to throw in one more idea. Why can't we just create a plant that the zebra mussels or the flying carp are going to eat to kill them. Because it might have like unwanted side effects. Oh, and then we're back the to 25 yeah. minutes ago when we were talking about this thing leads to that thing leads to that it's thing leads to that fish. thing. And if you exactly. were to put that plant into the fresh water, we couldn't drink it without filtering out really well. And what would it do to the other populations of fish? Oh. It killed other fish. You guys are kind of making it sound like everything you do is dependent on something else. It is. Oh Lord! God, I hate that. Everybody, open up Bing. <laughs> I'm already there. Type in <laughs> trophic cascade. What? Trophic. Trophic. P H. Oh, P H R O. Trophic. Trophic, and the the F sound is a P H. Trophic. T R O P H. Trophic what? Trophic cascade. Cascade. Yeah. When predators no. try. Oh, the oh, I can't wait to eat T R. T R. That rivalry is the next lower trophic level for predators from predation or herbivory and intermediate trophic level. Don't read out loud. Let everybody look at their stuff, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. God, Alex, what are you doing? <laughs> When Jim wrote GMOs equals zebra mussels, was he talking about trophic cascade? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We're going with it. Is trophic cascade something to be looked forward to or feared? Fear. Oh. Well, okay. Because basically, like it's, if, and now Parker has a solution to the zebra mussel trophic okay. cascade. Yes, okay. <laughs> So, it's, write this it's a down. Bit million dollar idea. Off base, but st stay with me. Okay. Stay with me here. So we can just introduce about like two hundred or so otters into the system, because first off, otters they do eat zebra mussels. I've seen this. On is that their main source of food? It's not it? their main one, but they do eat it. And I feel we like can make it their main source of food. We can teach them. Okay. <laughs> So we have 
named King. otter. King. Yes. yes. Gotcha. Exactly. Okay. Then what? And then, okay, so then we would have a bunch of cute little otters, because the otters are really cute. You know that. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, while they're climbing up your leg, they're really oh. cute. They're trying to eat They're going to get your throat. Otter. It's fine. Keep going. Um, then, like, if a hundred years down the road, let's say, like, otters are taken over, we can just hunt otters. This is actually a pretty, it's actually a We're pretty going good. To, Parker, you're going to the South Dakota Game and Fishing Parks. Okay. okay. There you go. Parker, you're going to this kid. Pack my bags. So, pack your own bags. Hmm? How about the law of unintended consequences? Did that's I ask like, that one out loud? No, you didn't. No. But you pers personified it. That's like um uh non-target organisms. Yes. What does that mean? Like what he was. That, Isabel needs to yeah, answer Isabel the question that I've asked. What did you ask again? What does that mean? Non-target organisms. Yes. Like uh. Like if you have a crop and it has something in it and it's resistant to this certain type of thing and it's a main food source for a type of animal and whatever's in that crop ends up affecting the animal, whether it's going to die or like has something wrong with it, then that's a non-target organism. I had a whole page of, about it up, but I lost it. Okay. Um, can you go back up, please? Um, right underneath Mr. Bruner's GMOs equal zebra mussels, Mary asked the question appropriate and ethical. No. Why did she ask that? Because that's the question. Yeah, I know. Because she felt like it. Come on. Was she responding directly to what Jim wrote? I don't think so. Why not? Because what it doesn't seem like they have much to do with each other. Give me some scientific proof that it may not be related. Uh, zebra. We all know zebra mussels. Go to the right side. Yeah. If they were both put up there in the same minute, they may both be replying to something that happened before that. What's ethics? Like what you think is good in your life. It could be the, like the it's big good one, ethics like not to yeah. like hurt someone. In your own mind. Do scientists have to follow ethical standards? No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll get there later. Down. We're not going to spend a lot of time on that right this very second. Yes, we will. There's a whole section in the standards about that. Is it our responsibility to sustain a growing to human this, population? We're going to put that away when the bell rings. Or is it our responsibility to sustain the planet? Yeah, you can turn your computer on. They do, yeah. or we do. Yeah. Okay. Should we be worried about only humans, or should we be worried about the whole planet? We should be, we should be worried, worried about the future of the human race. Without the planet, humans are really kind of toast, right? We think we're the top dog. But wait a minute. <laughs> the house only wins. Without humans, is the planet toast? No, not really. The planet will just go on like, and on. Well, actually, I guess or, maybe. Because nope. like, then we'll have like a bunch of like deer running all about the and like environment stabbing too. different like uh, bears, and then they'll become carnivores and they'll start eating nope. everything else, and then oh. we'll have a deer society. I'm gonna see. I'm oh. gonna bring the social studies aspect of this in as well. How many of you have ever made the comment that the United States needs to stop sending money overseas to help other nations? I need to stop spending money here. And what happens <laughs> if we do that? Um, the other nations are like. They don't fund us, nuke them. Wait, 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 wait. What happened in the last 10 years in Iraq and Afghanistan? When America pulled out and war. quit sending money there? No, we started the war. We started the war a long time ago. We didn't end the war, we left. We left ourselves. And the Is there still a war in Iraq, in Iraq and oh, Afghanistan? Yeah. yeah. We didn't end the war, we just left. We just told them that's your own problem. Oh, we shot in Latin. It all goes back to that's that. All, that's all we wanted to do. 
It all goes back to that law of unintended consequences, though. Whether it's history, math, social studies, how many of you have ever put a decimal point in the wrong spot at the beginning of a math problem and got the wrong answer at the end, even though it was the right numbers? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Law of unintended consequences. It happens everywhere. Do you have to pay attention to it? Yes. Absolutely. When you change one thing, you're going to change others. Exactly. And before we run out of time, let's get to the last one from Mr. Bruner up there. Do any of these students know, do you realize, that the lightest and the most serious of these topics are affecting you right now? I'm pretty sure you asked that. We know, but we just don't yeah. care at this point. Why don't you care? Because we because have not had things no like me in this present moment. What I can, we I can do? tell you the answer to that. Why? The answer is we right ain't. there. Well, I don't care. Why Which part of your brain is right there? From the front. <laughs> your frontal lobe. When is your frontal lobe fully formed and completely operating like 20, you should? Is it a 21? Like 21. 22 to 24. Ah. So we're legally able to drink. So, we may kill that before it's fully gone. Okay. Have you ever heard of alcohol poisoning? Yeah. Yeah. Does it happen to people that are like 50? Probably. Does it happen to people that are like 20? Yeah. 20. If it happens to people Duh. that are 50. It can. It can happen to anyone. It's more likely. That's not the question you exactly. Younger, there you go. Because your brain ain't right. We had several essays that were due. Make sure they're uploaded. We have four minutes of class left. Huh? Ms. Keller, is there anything you desperately want to get into this conversation before we end it? No, but thank you. It was really interesting hearing um, what you guys thought and hearing the whole debrief from Friday. How many of you thought Friday worked? I mean, it was kind of fun. How many of you thought Friday was something that should be done again or... Let's do it again. It's modified the number. Let's, yeah. Let's do it again with like maybe a farmer instead of a new. Oh my gosh, no. Wednesday. Time out. I'm actually going to ask Mrs. Keller to question. Can you hold your thought for just yeah. a second? Because I don't want to lose her. Mrs. Absolutely. Keller, you were on video that day. You were on the computer that day. From your perspective, what did the kids need to do different in order to make your side of it more readily available to you, more accessible, more understandable, more pleasant, whatever adjective you want to put in there? Um, I thought that everyone did a really good job of talking audibly so we could all hear what you guys were saying and I liked the sign, I think if the signs were written in permanent marker and thicker letters we could tell who everybody was better because it was hard to see like farmers and the ones in the back. Um, <laughs> maybe when you're, when you're talking you could Sometimes it was hard to tell who was talking as well. Like, I, I would hear the voice, but I couldn't tell whose mouth was moving. And it was really obvious when Alex stood up and was talking because he was standing up and using his hands. And so that, I don't want to no, say everybody else. Trevor, 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 Trevor. Trevor. You have to be, be more emphatic, use more emphasis when you're talking. Um, but aside from that, I think that's it. Awesome. So... I think this process is worthwhile. I think doing that again is a great idea. Don't invite that hard. Well, Jeff, using the same topic would be stupid. Yeah. So we're <laughs> going to use the process with a different topic. Yeah, let's do one, let's let's do one that I want. At some point. <laughs> Let's, let's do that easier for us. No, let's let's do it on oh, no, not easier. Sure. No. If you can do what you did there, I'm a we're not backing you know, down. Like we're making it hard. Like, like, kind of one, two, three, you guys make me want to cry sometimes. We love you, Paige. She hates you, Paige. You just made my day. She hates you, just like she Paige. That's what they want. She hates giving them what they want. Paige, did we make you think? Well, yeah, after this uh, class, my brain her. is seriously oh, fried, and I just want to go home and go to bed. Hey, Mr. Schneider. It's a good thing you have court. Mrs. Schneider. Or Mr. Schneider. No, it's no, a good thing I have study hall. I know. It made Bud Weiser. It made Bud Weiser. What? Parker, yeah. you've lost your speaking privilege. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell another one just real quick? You know what time to do? Sure. Does music make you think? It made Stevie wonder. Uh. <laughs> 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 you don't have any more. Yeah.
Hey, what? When the bell rings, the bell rings. When the bell rings, yeah, we're going to go to dinner. No, don't, don't acknowledge her. You'll get hurt. Oh. <laughs>